One of the biggest concerns law enforcement have at the fair is underage drinking, which in some cases could result in jail time. Cascade County Sheriff's Department has a no tolerance policy and they have a new tool this year to control drinking at the fair. For the first time ever, of age fairgoers who want to partake in some adult beverages at the Montana State Fair need to purchase a wristband for $1. Safety is a big concern and it's worth it to pay the little extra for the wristbands to make sure everybody's safe at the fair. The Sheriff's Department has been cracking down on underage drinking, catching over 20 illegal drinkers last year, one as young as 13 whose BAC was so high she had to go to the hospital. I don't know how many kids in my career I've taken to the, to the hospital and they've had to have their stomach pumped and everything because of overconsumption. Expo Park staff serving alcohol attend Let's Control It training to keep their customers as safe as possible. Looking at somebody, maybe sure you're not supposed to overserve them, making sure that they're not bringing drinks back to somebody else. Underage drinking isn't just a safety concern because of overconsumption, but there's a lot of traffic between crowds and livestock and an intoxicated person can't make the safest judgments. If you don't play by the rules, you could end up in here. If you are caught here, you will be cited. There's a potential that you could go to jail and then you'll be escorted off the fairgrounds and you will not be allowed back on for the remainder of the fair. Sheriff Edwards warns don't be offended if an officer cards you just because you look young. They're just doing their duty. And remember that it doesn't matter where the drinking occurs. Underage intoxication is illegal. So it's not just the fairgrounds, but some of these people think they can get drunk and then come in and get away with it. That's not going to happen. Law enforcement is also going to be very strict about providing alcohol to minors. Hopefully that when people have to pay for that wristband, they're going to keep it. They're not going to share it with everybody. If you get caught doing that, that's not a ticket. You're going to go to jail if you share that with a minor. Although underage drinking is a big concern at the fair each year, it's decreasing little by little. You catch a couple of these kids and they tell everybody else, hey, don't go over there. Underage drinking is always one of the main concerns, but some other tips to keep in mind include stay with your children. A lot can happen in a big crowd, so keep them close and don't bring valuables to the fair and leave them in plain sight. Each year, thieves will take advantage of the opportunity, so leave your valuables at home. In the studio, Rachel Osley, ABC5. Over the past week, we've learned you'll never know what you're going to find at the Montana State Fair from men eating fire and swords to tattoo parlors. Mystic Rhythms was the first and only tattoo shop to ever break skin at the Montana State Fair in 2007. And they've been back a few more times since then, including this year offering piercings and tattoos. They didn't really think that they wanted it, so we had to prove ourselves. And they've done this by following the rules and being sanitary. They're washing all the time. They're washing their hands. Uh, they wear sterile gloves. This is Gloria McFadden's first tattoo. Her friend and her did it on a dare. McFadden got an anklet piece. Mainly because um, I wanted to cover up a mole that I had. She was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was. It does hurt, but it's not that bad, folks. <laughs> My goal as a piercer is to make them as comfortable as possible and to make it as painless as possible. It's already painful enough. Some challenges of doing tattoos and piercings in a booth at the fair. Well, we're not under uh, air conditioning, that's for sure. The amount of space we have to work is a little bit smaller. It's not the best, but the artists learn to just deal with it. They find a new venue with some shocked onlookers is a ton of fun. It doesn't bother me. I kind of like to show off, so I enjoy the audience. Over twice the amount of tools they have at the shop, they have to haul to the fair to ensure the safest environment because it's all once and done. We use one use only sterile needles. Um, our tools are always sterilized. In the shop, we use all medical metal tubes. Here, we use disposables, so it's a one use only. Nothing is reused at the fair. It gets sterilized back at the shop before it can be used again. It's only going to hurt for a minute. If you have commitment issues like me, you can always get a henna tattoo. In a couple weeks, you have a fresh canvas and you can get something else. Although I wasn't ready to make a lifetime commitment, you can. They're taking walk-ins from 11 to 11 p.m. and they're doing special pricing for the fair. In Great Falls, Rachel Osley, Fox 5.
The most recent national statistics show an average of 11,000 bus crashes resulting in injuries each year. But officials say bus travel is one of the safest modes of transportation. Coaches to me are like Cadillacs. If you look at statistics, traveling by bus, one of the safest ways to go. Coaches are designed with a unique passenger safety system called compartmentalization. But today, some coaches are even designed with the option of wearing a seatbelt. Seatbelts were mandated in 1968 for passenger vehicles, but they are not required for buses. Training provided to Big Sky coach drivers lets them know seatbelts are not always helpful. People were injured less seriously by not having seatbelts than they were with seatbelts on. Driving a bus um, presents a few extra challenges for the driver. Um, for one, they usually have a lot more noise and distraction. Um, just with the amount of people that they are transporting. But this is not a problem for Jerry Benoit. He's been driving coaches for 11 years and can tune out distractions. I think it's something you train yourself for. My major concern is the passengers. Your bus driver plays a key role in your safety. There isn't anybody that is just hired on and put right out there on a, on a coach. Before being entrusted with about 55 lives on a coach, drivers go through extensive classroom and on-the-road training. I can basically read what what's going on outside there just by knowing the temperature. Weather conditions are another concern and drivers must pay close attention to everything around them to prepare for anything. If I'm looking like 10 cars ahead or something like that and the lights start, the stoplights start coming on, then right. I'm preparing myself that something's going on so I need to start slowing down. And driver safety is not just for the driver of the bus. If you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you, you know what I mean? So we all have to be aware and we have to watch our mirrors. The compartmentalization passenger safety feature is designed to keep passengers safe through shock absorbent and closely spaced seats, as well as the frame design of the vehicle. In a head-on collision, the front of the bus should roll upward, and if impact is on the side, passenger seats are above impact level. Live in the studio, Rachel Osley, News Channel 5.